Today we're going to be talking about the Tursan syndrome. And even though what Tursan originally described was a vitreous hemorrhage secondary to a subarachnoid hemorrhage, most authors agree that it's any intraocular hemorrhage secondary to subarachnoid hemorrhage that we should consider the Tursan syndrome. And that means it can be an intraretinal hemorrhage, a subretinal hemorrhage, or a pre-retinal hemorrhage with or without papal edema. And so when we're looking in the eye in a patient who has a subarachnoid hemorrhage, we're gonna be looking for this intraocular hemorrhage to document the Tursan syndrome. Patients may be asymptomatic, the hemorrhage is not blocking their macula, but if it's in the macula, under the macula, or in front of the macula, they might present with decreased visual acuity. And we can tell kind of the location of the hemorrhage by the appearance of the hemorrhage. So intraretinal hemorrhages, as you know, are, are dot and blot. And then you've got subretinal hemorrhages, which are under the blood vessel. So the blood vessel runs on top of the hemorrhage. And then preretinal hemorrhages or boat shape hemorrhages assume this kind of configuration because they're in the potential space underneath the hyaloid face and the retina. And so even though the fluid is really like this configuration, because of gravity, the red cells all settle to the bottom. And so this has this boat shaped appearance. And then if the hemorrhage gets out into the vitreous, it'll make a vitreous hemorrhage. And so it might be a dif more diffuse uh, appearance. And so if it's a hemorrhage like this is blocking your macula, we might be able to do a YAG laser right here and then let the blood out to drain out to clear up the macula. So the other hemorrhages, the intraretinal hemorrhages and the subretinal hemorrhages normally resorb on their own and are not really going to be symptomatic unless they're in the macula. In patients who have a subarachnoid hemorrhage, neurosurgeons use different classification schemes to judge the patient's prognosis. And one of the most popular is the Hunt-Hess, and that's a clinical uh, staging system where patients are either asymptomatic or they just have a, a little bit of deficit or they could be very, very severe, stuporous or comatose. And those are gonna be predictive of final outcome uh, for the patient. And they have CT, grading scales, Fisher scales that defined how much hemorrhage, whether it's thin or thick, if it's diffuse or if it's a intraventricular hemorrhage. And you don't have to know about Hunt-Hess and Fisher except to know that the Hunt-Hess and the Fisher, both the clinical grade and the Fisher CAT scan score correlate with the severity of the problem and the, the likelihood that they might have the Tursan syndrome. And so it's no surprise that patients with Tursan are predictive of more severe disease and therefore more severe disease is more predictive of prognosis. In addition to documenting the Tursan syndrome, it's also important to help differentiate what the pathogenesis of the hemorrhage is. And so, as you know, the optic nerve sheath contains the cerebrospinal fluid and therefore it's in direct continuity with the intracranial cavity. And so when you have a rapid rise of intracranial pressure, that pressure is transmitted down the CSF to the optic nerve head, and then little capillaries, either on the disc head itself or in the retina, can break, and that can lead to the formation of the hemorrhage, whether that is a vitreous hemorrhage, a preretinal boat-shaped hemorrhage, or an intraretinal hemorrhage, um, depends on the local vascular anatomy and the height and the speed of the pressure. So we really can't predict what the intracranial pressure is just by looking at the eye and seeing what kind of hemorrhage it is. Because there's many, many factors in Dracula that determine probably that you have an intraretinal, subretinal, preretinal, or vitreous hemorrhage. So the Tursan syndrome is basically intraocular hemorrhage related to subarachnoid hemorrhage. It's probably caused by increased intracranial pressure. A marked elevation in the ICP is transmitted. And you should know it correlates with Hunt tests, the clinical criteria, as well as the Fisher grade on the CAT scans, and that we can treat it if it's blocking the macula, but it's pre-retinal hemorrhage by making a hole in the bottom of this boat and letting the blood out.